You've learned in math class how to measure the volume of solids with regular shapes. For instance, you measure the length and multiply it by the width and the height of a rectangular solid to calculate its volume. For a cylinder, you measure the radius, square it, and multiply it by the height of the cylinder to get the cylinder's volume. But when it comes to measuring the volume of an irregular solid, a different method has to be used called water displacement. To use this method, you must first fill a graduated cylinder with enough water to cover the object. Now we read the level on the graduated cylinder. We see that the bottom of our meniscus has passed the 20 milliliter mark, but is short of the 21 milliliter mark. And I am going to say that the bottom part of the meniscus rests on the eighth of the 10 imaginary lines between 20 and 21. So I write down a number 20.8 milliliters for the volume of this water alone. Next, we carefully slide the object into the graduated cylinder, being careful not to spill or let any of the water splash out. And now we record our new volume. You can see that the water level has risen past the 21, 22, 23 milliliter mark, but it is not yet touching the 24 milliliter mark. Our second reading of water plus the object is therefore 23.7 milliliters. Seven because I think that the bottom of the meniscus sits on the seventh of the tenth 10 imaginary lines between 23 and 24. Finally, subtract the first reading from the second reading to calculate the amount the water rose in the graduated cylinder with the addition of the object. This number represents the water that was pushed out of its original position in the bottom of the cylinder by the solid and is equal to the volume of that solid. It is correct to convert milliliters to cubic centimeters because one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter as you learned in class and because this is a solid, its volume units should be presented in cubic centimeters.